Starlink, Elon Musk's space-based internet provider, has now been considered a military target in the eyes of Moscow in Russia's continuous tactic to subjugate Ukraine. While Starlink has been vital in keeping Ukraine online and had been employed in resisting the invasion attempts of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, its network of satellites that hovers in low Earth orbit, LEO, has made them susceptible to electromagnetic attack. Liftoff of the Falcon 9. SpaceX recently launched another one of its Falcon 9 rockets into space. This rocket bore 53 Starlink satellites to orbit. There are, as of today, more than 3,000 in operation with plans currently ongoing to launch a much more powerful rocket, known as the Falcon Heavy. And this time, the contents of the rocket are strictly classified, as it involves the U.S. Space Force. These frequent launches further escalate the tensions between the United States and Russia, which ordinarily are at an all-time high. While speaking at a recently concluded space conference, the deputy commander of the U.S. Space Command, Lieutenant General John Shaw said he was certain that his counterpart in Russia, whoever that is, was not very happy with Starlink, as it's assisting Ukraine. General John Shaw further stated that with commercial imagery, such as Maxar's products, that are plastering all over the world news on events taking place at the warfront, he does not think Russia was pleased about that either. He also expressed fear that Russia would take steps to try and stop those commercial services because they run counter to Russians' national interest. In light of this, the Russian government in response has indirectly sent a warning to Musk that Starlink satellites will be shot down. A senior Russian foreign ministry official, Konstantin Vorantsov, further dubbed the use of Western satellites to assist Ukraine as an extremely dangerous trend towards a full-fledged arms race in outer space. He also claims that the use of these commercial satellites to assist Ukraine was provocative. Berant Sof, while speaking at a meeting of the UN's Committee on Disarmament and International Security, had expressed in very strong and clear terms Russia's frustrations and dissatisfaction with the West's intervention using commercial satellite apparatus and what he called an interference. He suggested that the Russian government consider such assistance as a direct participation in the war, meaning companies such as Starlink are likely to be labeled as parties in the opposition that Moscow may have to fight. Though Vorant Sof made no specific mention of any satellite companies, it is speculated that this jab would seemingly include Elon Musk's Starlink operation, because according to SpaceX, Musk had sent about 20,000 Starlink satellite units since the start of Putin's invasion to assist Ukraine with internet service, as its clash with Russia continues. Likewise, among all the Western companies aiding Ukraine, Musk and his Starlink satellites are most likely to anger Russia the most. Musk had also earlier made mention of his satellites being targeted already by cyber warfare attacks, with speculations of attempts to blind Starlink with Perizoviv laser beams fired from Belgorod in Russia. It's also worth noting that the billionaire asked the Pentagon for financial aid in funding the operation earlier last month claiming the project had cost SpaceX around $80 million. Despite the online backlash, Musk still agreed that he would keep funding the operation for free if needed, stressing the need for good deeds in times like this. Musk had tweeted, The hell with it. Even though Starlink is still losing money and other companies are getting billions of taxpayer dollars, we'll just keep funding Ukraine government for free. Let's not forget that Russia first invaded Ukraine on the 24th of February 2022 in a major escalation of the Russo-Ukrainian War, which originally started in 2014. The invasion without a doubt has resulted in tens of thousands of deaths on both sides, leading to Europe's largest refugee crisis since World War II. As of late May, an estimated 8 million people have been displaced within the country 
with 7.7 .7 million Ukrainians fleeing the country as of 18 October 2022. The invasion began on the morning of February 24, after Putin announced what he called a special military operation for the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. In his address, Putin advocated irredentist views which seek the incorporation of Russians outside of Russian borders into the current Russian state and appears to be challenged by Ukraine's right to statehood, falsely claiming that Ukraine was governed by neo-Nazis who were responsible for the persecution of the ethnic Russian minority. Barely minutes after this address, rockets, airstrikes, and missiles hit Ukraine including Kiev, the capital city, closely followed by a large ground Russian invasion from various directions. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky immediately sanctioned martial law and a general mobilization in response to the attacks. While the invasion has received widespread public and international condemnation, some countries and certain sectors were sympathetic or expressed outright support for Russia as a result of distrust in the U.S. foreign policy. Many other nations went on to impose sanctions on Russia, as well as on Belarus, its close ally. And this has had a culminating effect on the Russian economy and the world, while providing military and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine for a total of over $80 billion from 40 countries as of August 2022. As if the sanctions and provided aid were not enough, demonstrations and protests were held worldwide, with some in Russia itself and parts of Ukraine occupied by Russia. Hackers also attacked Russian websites, aimed at those operated by the Russian government. Russians living abroad also had to bear the brunt of the anti-Russian sentiment that surged after the invasion. Despite these, Russian does not appear to be backing down. Recent reports from Ukraine claim that water supplies and power across the country had been badly hit after Russia launched more than 50 missiles targeting these critical facilities. While Russia's response to this was that the original target of the missiles was Ukraine's military command and energy systems. 40% of the Ukrainian residents are currently without water, and according to the recent update from the mayor, Vitaly Klitsko, about 270,000 apartments have no electricity. Musk, chief executive of Tesla Incorporated and the world's richest person, recently revealed that SpaceX spends an equivalent of $20 million monthly to maintain satellite services for Ukraine. Musk in a tweet said, to be precise, 25,300 terminals were sent to Ukraine but at present, only 10,630 are paying for the service. It goes without saying that Starlink has in no little way helped Ukraine's military and civilians to stay online during the war. Ukraine's Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov acknowledged this while saying that Starlink services had helped to restore communications infrastructure and energy in critical areas. Now in the recent turn of events, Russia is starting to frown at these benefits Ukrainians are getting from Starlink. Should Russia follow through on its threats and shoot down some Starlink satellites, Musk would be at a heavy loss. If Putin were to attack SpaceX satellites, it would spark a sharp and unmistakable surge of tension between Russia and the U.S., as no country has ever attempted to strike an enemy satellite with a missile before now. Be that as it may, Russia has both the experience and capability to attempt an offensive space move. The nation launched an anti-satellite missile in 2021 and successfully destroyed one of its own satellites. So we know they have the capability to make good on their threats. However, in response to these threats, the White House said it would be sure to respond appropriately to any attack from Russia against U.S. commercial satellites. Any attack on U.S. infrastructure will be met with an appropriate response appropriately. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told reporters while stating that the United States will hold Russia accountable for any such attack, 
should it occur. Amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine and barely days after Russia made its threat to target these commercial satellites that have provided a godsend to Ukraine and its supporters during the war, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre further buttressed what her counterpart at the Pentagon already said. We will pursue all means to explore, deter, and hold Russia accountable for any such attacks. Clearly, I'm not going to lay them down here in public, but we have made ourselves very clear. Ukraine and its Western allies have placed complete faith in several commercial companies from the United States, among which are Maxar Technologies and Planet. These companies have constantly provided real-time satellite imagery of the happenings on the Ukrainian battlefield. Additionally, according to reports from Space News, the presence of swarms of satellites would make targeting Starlink satellites simply more difficult, as the director of the Space Force's Space Development Agency, Derek Tournier, made known. So far, Russia has only taken preliminary actions in disrupting the services of U.S. commercial satellite services assisting Ukrainians in this war. But we could very much see the first space war in human history anytime soon.